Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. you, Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. A few quick announcements, and we're going to get into the Word. How many of us are hungry for the Word today? I know it's going to let the Word change us today. Amen? How many know it's very important that we apply the, word, apply the Word of God in our lives? Amen? Every Wednesday night here at Changing Lives Christian Church, we have a Bible study. We go through verse by verse right now. We're going through um, the book of Luke, the Gospel of Luke, and I want to invite you all to come on out. It's for one hour from 7 to 8 o'clock every Wednesday night. We have our Bible studies in the fellowship hall, so when you enter the church, it's right around the corner. Also, we have Thursday morning prayer every Thursday morning at 7.30 here at the church. And our food pantry is open every Sunday at 10 o'clock in the morning. So if you, knew, if you are, you know of any folks that need some groceries, please, by all means, send them here and we'll provide free groceries for them. Also, um, we have a revival coming up at the church from September 11th to the 13th. Uh, Brother Joseph Tambor is going to be coming from Connecticut to preach a weekend revival. It's going to be four services, Friday night, Saturday night, uh, Sunday morning, and Sunday night. So we're looking forward to that. That is, again, September 11th through the 13th. Um, and also, um, the United Night of Prayer is coming up, which we will host this coming August 20th. That's a Thursday night at 7 p.m. United Night of Prayer is when several churches here in the Haverhill area get together and we come together in each one of our facilities once a month uh, and we pray for different prayer that God puts on our hearts. So we'd like to invite you to come to that as well. Amen. Again, August 20th at 7 p.m. coming up. A live worship team, which, which are awesome. Praise God for, those, for these men of God. Uh, they'll be here every other week to bless us with live worship. Somebody say praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. I've always wanted to play an instrument. You know, I've tried so many different times. I've tried to play the keyboard, and I've tried to ch teach myself and buy books, and I just can't, I, I just, I don't know, I just can't play an instrument. But praise God for, for men of God that can. Amen. Praise God. There you go. Brother Mike's going to show, us how to show me how to play the drums. Amen. Just to set those up takes a PhD. <laughs> Never mind play them. Praise God. Can we all stand to our feet at this time? And if you would, open up your Bibles to the book of Isaiah, chapter 33, in the Word of God. Isaiah, chapter 33. I'm reading verses 5 and 6. As I was praying in my office concerning the message that the Lord wanted all of us to hear from pulpit to pew, I felt the Holy Spirit nudging me, saying, Preach about the fear of the Lord. My people need to have the fear of the Lord. Amen. Somebody say glory to God. Isaiah chapter 33 in the Word of God, verses 5 and 6. If for some reason, by the way, you don't have a Bible, there are some Bibles on the windowsills over there. New King James Version. Feel free to use one of them. The Bible says, I'm reading the New Living Translation today. It says, Though the Lord is very great and lives in heaven, he will make Jerusalem his home of justice and righteousness. In that day, he will be your sure foundation, providing a rich store of salvation, wisdom, and knowledge. Now look at these last words of this verse. The fear of the Lord is the key to this treasure. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for your anointing. As I decrease, dear Holy Spirit, please increase in me. Lord, speak the words in which we need to hear from pulpit to pew. Lord, I pray that you would, your word today would change lives, Lord God. I pray that we would have a closer relationship with you. If for some reason, Lord, we used to have the fear of the Lord and we've kind of went out in left field concerning that and we don't have that anymore, bring that back to us today, Lord. Let us make that decision, Lord God, to come back to you, to reverence you, to receive respect you to take the things of God in the very utmost highest degree and to be serious with them Lord we live our lives every single day and you tell us in your word not to sin and Lord we don't want to sin Lord we want to have a closer and closer relationship with you so Father Holy Spirit God please speak to us today Lord God through this message and we thank you for that in Jesus name we pray amen amen you may be seated praise the name of the Lord how do you know, church, that holy fear is the key to God's sure foundation, unlocking the treasuries of salvation, wisdom, and knowledge. Along with the love of God, it composes the very foundation of life. We will soon learn that we cannot truly love God until we fear Him, nor can we properly fear Him until we love Him. How many know the two go hand in hand? Amen? How many of us know that we've got to take the things of God very seriously? 
Amen. The men and women of God, we've got to take very seriously. We've got to say, Lord, your word is the final authority. Whenever I make a decision about something, Lord, I'm going to go to your word first concerning what it says. It, sa- it is the final authority. Now, how many you know, church, there are a lot of teachings out there today that are really weird teachings and not really of God? We always, always, always have to go back to the word of Almighty God and say, Lord, what does your word say about this issue? Your word isn't based on some preacher or somebody out there saying some kind of doctrine. It's based on the Bible. Amen. The word of Almighty God. The Bible, the acronym for B-I-B-L-E is basic instruction before leaving earth. Amen. How many know we've got to know and understand this is how we live according to God's word. Amen. This is how we live our lives. The Bible tells us, for example, if you're a worry wart, it says in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6, it says don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything everything. Amen. Praise God. The Bible says that we have the joy of the Lord, which is our strength. Somebody say, I want some more joy. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Glory to God. You know, as we grow in the Lord, amen, we ask the question, okay, Lord, what exactly is the fear of the Lord? What is that? It's the fear of the Lord is an awareness that you are in the presence of a holy, just, and almighty God, and that he will hold you accountable for your motives, thoughts, words, and actions. To fear God is to desire to live in harmony with his righteous standards and to honor him in all that we do. Somebody say glory be to God. Amen. When we have the fear of the Lord, how many know praise God? We grow in our relationship with God. When we have the fear of the Lord, amen, our prayers get answered. I'm thinking of James chapter 5, verse 16 in the Word of God. It says, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So therefore, if we fear God, we're going to live a life that is righteous before the Lord. We're going to live a life that is pleasing to God our Father. I have, I have a habit now, every single time the alarm goes off when I get up in the morning, before I even get myself out of bed, when I sit up in my bed, I say, Lord, I want to thank you for another day of life. I want to thank you that you woke me up this morning because many people in this world didn't have the privilege of waking up. They passed away in their sleep. I pray, Lord, that somehow and in some way today I could just glorify your name, Lord. Father, help me to be pleasing to you. Amen. Praise God. You know, we can't be, you can't be um, people pleasers. How many know the Bible teaches to be a God pleaser? To please our Heavenly Father. Praise God. Irregardless what other people say. If they make fun of you because you're a Christian. If they make fun of you, whatever, they call you a holy roller or whatever the case is. It doesn't matter. You can still just praise God and not worry about what people say. We've got to worry much, much about less what people say and more, much more about what God says in our lives. Amen. Psalms in the Bible, chapter 112, verses 1 through 3. The Bible says, Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who finds great delight in his commands. His children will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches are in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. Somebody say his righteousness endures forever. I was speaking to somebody up in my office recently this past week, and they were saying, you know, you know, Pastor Craig, things have changed with our times. You know, they're not like they used to be a few hundred years ago. Generations change and that type of thing. And I reminded this individual, that is so true, but God's word never will change. You know, people are going to change. We're going to have more modern things in our lives and so forth. Amen. But how many know God's word is the same? The Bible says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Malachi in the Old Testament says that God changes not. So therefore, his word is not going to change because of popular demand. His word won't change because most people are sinning in a certain area, and it's okay because they're doing it, I'll do it too. I'll join the crowd. No, we have to, be, we have to say, Lord, I am going to agree with your word. I want to live according to your word, and I want your word to change me on a daily basis. I just want to encourage you, if you don't do daily devotions, if you, in other words, if you don't wake up in the morning early and read your Bible and, and study your Bible and pray and spend some time alone with God every single day, how many know you've got to get back into the, again, that again? I want to encourage you to get back into those daily devotions. You see, what you set your eyes to and your heart to and what you think about every day is the direction that you're leading in your life. Therefore, if I'm doing my devotions every day, I say, Lord, at a certain time I wake up in the morning, I get my cup of coffee, praise God, and of course it's heavenly donuts. First you've got to go to Dunkin' Donuts to get baptized, right? Then you go to heavenly... And I'm just kidding. Anyway, 
But if I'm reading my Bible with my cup of coffee with me every single day, praise God, I'm focused on God's Word. I'm saying, Lord, I, I, I need to apply what I just read in my life now. How can I do that? Application to the Word of God is so very important, church. James chapter 1, verse 22 says, Be doers of the Word, not just hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Now, let me take a back step for a minute here. I want to talk about habits for just a minute. How many know we're all prone to have habits? In fact, we all have habits. I don't think we scheduled ourselves to get up in the morning and, okay, at this time, I've got to go take a shower. It was a habit. We do it every day. I hope we do it every day. Glory to God. Amen? A habit was, okay, we eat breakfast or whatever the case is. Different habits. How many of you know our habits lead to the direction in which we're going to? Now, if we come into church, I'm going to give you an example. If we come into church Sunday after Sunday and we listen to the message that the pastor has, whatever church you go to, and we're not applying what was said, that will turn into a form of deception because that habit will be a habit of not doing what the message said. Do you follow what I mean? How I many you know it's a good thing to say on Saturday night before you come into church on a Sunday morning, I am going to listen to the message tomorrow. I am going to take some notes. I'm going to let it change my life, and I'm going to ask questions. How can I apply this to my life? Today, we're preaching about the fear of the Lord. You know, besides you, I have to deal with this too. It's not just for you. I'm not telling you what to do. I got to do this too. I have to walk in the fear of the Lord. And if I'm not doing that, I got to ask myself questions. The only privilege I have is I can ask myself questions before I preach the message because I prepared it, right? Praise God. But we, if, we, if we say, okay, Lord, what areas do I just feel casual in my relationship with you about? You know, Lord, am I a part-time Christian? I know you're not a part-time God. Do I come into church for two hours on a Sunday morning and lift my hands and praise you and worship you and magnify your name and then Monday through Saturday do my own thing and not even, take, not even have you in my mind with a second thought? How I many you know we've got to be a full-time Christian? Somebody say 24-7. Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. How I many you know God's always watching us? He never takes a vacation. You know, Jesus didn't send a text message out to the whole body of Christ and say, oh, by the way, uh, people, from uh, August 2nd to, uh, to August 20th, I'm on vacation. So if you need anything, please don't pray because I'm not around. Uh, if you're desperate for anything, uh, don't pray because I can't help you out. He doesn't do that, right? And, and how many know sometimes we almost think in our mentality that, well, we can take a vacation away from God. I'll, I'll just take a week of sin over here and God won't see me. You know, I'm hiding from him. He's seeing us 24-7 every single day. So how many of you know we got to walk in the integrity in the fear of the Lord every time? If you're at work and you're alone and your boss isn't there and you know you can just sit down and, and, and do nothing all day long, God is still there. And you are a Christian, so you are different. Amen? Therefore, you should still do your job even though the boss isn't there. You know, Dr. Jesus is there. The Lord is there. Amen? And work as unto the Lord. That's why I believe Christians should get promoted in their jobs more so than non-believers because we as Christians should, should really do our, put our full potential to whatever we do. And that boss is going to look at us and they're going to say, you know something, I want to promote you. I know I can trust you. You're not ripping off the company. You, you, come, into, you come into our workplace every time. You don't call in sick and pretend you are when you're really not. You're a good worker, therefore we're going to promote you. You're going to be the next supervisor. Amen? You're going to be the next manager, whatever the case is. Amen? If we do things God's way, we would be so blessed. You read uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28, the first 14 verses, and that is talking about blessings. It's talking about if we obey God, He's going to bless us. It's talking about if we disobey God, how many know we're going to have cursings? Somebody say, I want to, I want to obey God. Somebody, glory to God. Now, as we think about this, this topic of the fear of the Lord, Scripture is full of examples of how fearing God is a positive rather than a negative thing. For example, in Genesis chapter 42, Joseph wins his brother's trust when he declares he is a God-fearing man. It was because the midwives feared God that they obeyed him instead of the authorities by sparing the Hebrew babies in Exodus chapter 1 and verse 17. Think about Pharaoh in the book of Exodus. He brought, um, Pharaoh brought disaster on his nation because he did not fear God. How I many know Pharaoh didn't fear God at all? He kept on, Moses kept on coming in the name of the Lord saying, let my people go. Okay, sure, we'll let your people go. And then all of a sudden he'd pull them back again and then another curse would come. Amen. And over and over and over again. How I many know church, we need to fear God. 
I think about Moses in the Old Testament. He chose leaders to help him on the basis that they feared God and wouldn't take bribes in Exodus chapter 18 and told the Hebrews that God met with them in a terrifying display of his power so that they would not sin in Exodus 20 and 20. The Mosaic law cites fear of God as a reason to treat the disabled and elderly well in Leviticus 19. And lest you think this is the only in Old Testament idea, note that Jesus states this stronger than anyone else when he says these words, Don't be afraid of those who want to kill your body. They cannot touch your soul. Fear only God who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Now, somebody say, I need to fear the Lord. Amen. We need to walk in fear of the Lord. That's in Matthew chapter 10, verse 28, by the way. And the Apostle Paul tells us to work toward complete holiness because we fear God in 2 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 1. Let me tell you a little, a little key secret. In your life, if you're a Christian and if you start fearing God and walking in the fear of the Lord and reverencing Him and respecting Him and really, really walking as you want to please your Heavenly Father, you will have victory in your life. You'll have God's blessings watching over you. Amen? Praise God. So it's clear from these passages that I just read that fearing God is good because it saves us from caving into our own sinful nature. That's why hearing someone who is a God-fearing person actually makes us trust that person even more. See, if you're a God-fearing person, how many know people are going to trust you? Because you know that you answer to God first, not to that person. You answer to the Lord. It's always very, very important we keep our priorities in order. Number one, relationship with God. Somebody say relationship with God. Number one is not relationship with your spouse. It's not relationship with your mom. It's not relationship with your dad or your children or your career or your money or, or anything else that you're involved in. Your relationship with God is number one because that is eternal. Amen? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto us. Amen? Sometimes we seek after the things and then wait for God. We've got to seek after God, and then he'll send the things. So we put him first. Number two, relationship with your family. Amen. With your spouse, with your children, and so forth. That's number two priority. Thirdly is relationship with your job or ministry. Why? Because if you get any one of those mixed up, then you're, going to be, uh, you're actually going to be into idolatry because God says anything you put above him is idolatry. Even a relationship can be idolatry if that relationship is above the things of God in your life. You've got to say, Lord, I'm going to put you first, and, and if it doesn't line up with this one or that one, I'm still going to put you first. Amen. Praise God. So, somebody say Jesus is number one. Jesus. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 9 verse 31 says, Then the churches throughout all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria had peace and were edified, and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, they were multiplied. So how many know the book of Acts? What did they do? These, these, when the first church started up, all these Christians, they were first of all walking in the fear of the Lord. They took the things of God very seriously. Amen? They were walking in the fear of the Lord and also the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Today, the unfortunate thing is, is this. Many Christians are walking in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, but they're not walking in the fear of the Lord. And they're getting frustrated because they feel that God's going to bless me, but he's not blessing them because they're not walking in the fear of the Lord. How many you know we have, to, we have to walk in both? The fear of the Lord and the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. The fear of the Lord is not grasped by the mind, but etched into our hearts. It is revealed by the Holy Spirit as we read his word. It is one of the manifestations of the Spirit of God. If we turn over in the book of Isaiah, chapter 11, verses 1 and 2, it says this. It says, Out of the stump of David's family will grow a shoot, yes, a new branch bearing fruit from the old root. And the Spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. Somebody say the fear of the Lord. Glory to God. Amen. Now, I love Jeremiah 29, verses 11 through 14. We quote that many times, and it's so true in the Word of God. And, uh, you know, th this talks about that God will impart it to the hearts of those who earnestly seek Him. See, sometimes Christians, what they'll do is they'll, 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 they pr they're praying for something, they want it really bad. But they don't want it so bad 
that they start really fasting and praying. They start really, really saying, Lord, I'm, I'm going to be so serious with you and have a closer and closer relationship with you that they, they stop short. But how many you know God wants us to pray it through to persevere in our prayers? He doesn't want us to stop. If you've been praying for something that you know is the will of God, don't stop praying. Continue to. Persevere. Amen. Praise God. I had a father who rejected Jesus for many, many decades. And towards the end of his life, three months before he passed away, he received Jesus as his Lord and Savior. I never stopped praying for him. Even one day, he came to me and met with me at my house. It was during an evening, and I, it got me into tears. He said, Craig, you know, the Jesus thing is for you. Don't ever mention it to me because I don't want that. And I was upset. He's, your, he's my father. Amen. I wanted him to know Jesus. He came down with cancer years later, and I was sh still sharing the Word of God. Now, all of a sudden, he receives Jesus in his heart as his Lord and Savior. We're having communion together at Lawrence General Hospital, and that's where he had passed away, but right now he's in heaven because of the perseverance of prayer. I'm glad I didn't say, okay, Dad, I'll never mention Jesus to you again. Okay, Dad, I'll never, I'll never say, I won't pray for you anymore. Don't ever, ever give up in your prayers. Continue to pray, persevere, knock the gates of hell down in the name of Jesus, and tell the devil where he belongs underneath your feet. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. You know, our enemy is not flesh and blood. It's not per that person at your co-worker that, that's on your back all the time. It's not necessarily a bad boss, but it's what's behind that. It's the principality. It's the power. The rulers, the doctors of this age, the spiritual wickedness in high places. And you've got to come against that. Bind and rebuke it in the name of Jesus and put that under your feet. Somebody say, I have authority. Can I ask you all a question? Do you know who you are? When you walked in this church today, if there happened to be a demon in that foyer, well, as soon as you walked in, that demon got nervous. God just walked in. I'm not saying you're God. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying now. But greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. That's what my Bible says. You got the Holy Ghost living in you. When you say in the name of Jesus, Satan, he's got to listen because the third person of the Trinity is speaking through you and you're coming right against him in Jesus' name. The Bible comes and says, you're a loser. You say, I can do all things through Christ. Me. You say, you're never going to add up to nothing. I'm the head. I'm not the tail. Your God doesn't love you no more. You just sin too much in that area. Oh, no, my God loves me unconditionally, and his love will never stop loving me. Amen? You, just, you know, you, we have victory in our lives, and if you don't use that, if you just, oh, the devil's coming, i got to run away. Oh, stop bothering me. Stop it. Can't stop it. No, you got to get right back and say, in the name of Jesus. You know who you're dealing with? I'm not one of the seven sons of Sceva in the book of Acts. Seven, who, who's that, Pastor Craig? Well, these seven boys, you know, they, they were doing nothing one day. And so they were out, and they saw the apostle Paul casting out demons. And they said, that looks like a really cool thing to do, guys. Let's go around casting out demons. So they, they, they met up with the guy who was demon-possessed one day. And they walked up to the guy and he says, In the name of Jesus, who Paul serves, we command, you to, we command you to leave this body. You know what happened to those seven guys? Those demons and that man tore them to shreds. The demon and the man attacked them, ripped their clothes off, beat the tar out of all seven of them, and they ran away naked, the Bible says. What was the problem, Pastor Craig? They didn't know Jesus personally. They never accepted him as their personal Lord and Savior. They didn't have the Holy Spirit living within them. You see, when you receive Jesus, you know, I, I, demons, demons looked at him and says, Paul I know, Jesus I know, but who are you? The devil knows you by name because you know Jesus by name. And he's your personal Lord and Savior. So whenever you've got havoc going on in your house, whenever, whenever stuff is going on, like problem after problem after problem, you have to just take a step back and say, wait a minute, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth right now, I command you devil and demons of hell to get out of my house and to leave and not come back again. In the name of Jesus, I serve notice on you right now. You're evicted, and I'm not giving you two weeks. You're evicted right now. Amen? You've got to know who you are in Jesus. It's like the person who's looking for food. 
You know, the person who's homeless and they're looking for food and they didn't realize a man came by and they felt like blessing that person and they went in their jean pocket and they slipped a $100 bill inside their pocket and this poor homeless person is looking for food in dumpsters and pulling out, you know, a, you, you know, a pizza crust that's used and, and all this, this stuff and, and just brushing off the ants and the maggots in order to have a meal but he doesn't know he has a $100 bill in his back pocket. He could go to, he could, he could go, praise God, to over Texas Roadhouse, glory to God. He could get a nice big steak. He could sit down and eat like a king but he doesn't know it we've got to know who we are in Jesus Christ praise God hallelujah somebody say I'm a powerhouse in the Lord glory to God thank you Jesus amen Jeremiah chapter 29 verses 11 through 14 for I know the plans I have for you says the Lord they are plans for good and not for disaster you to give you a future and a hope somebody say God has given me a future and a hope and it's plans for good, not for bad. Amen? In those days when you pray, I will listen. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. I will be found by you, says the Lord. I will end your captivity and restore your, your fortunes. I will gather you out of the nations where I sent you, and I will bring you home again to your own land. Somebody say, I receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Jeremiah 32 and verse 40. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them. I will never stop doing good for them. I will put a desire in their hearts to worship me, and they will never leave me. Praise be to God. Now, how many of you know that the Lord comes wherever he is reverenced? How many know the Holy Spirit is a gentleman? Jesus even said in the book of Revelation, I come and I knock at the door of your heart. If you open the door, I will come in. But if you don't open the door, I am not going to push it down. I'm not going to force it open. I'm not going to make you receive me as Lord and Savior. I am going to knock, and I'm going to give you an invitation. And if you accept the invitation by your free will, which only God can, has given us, our free will, then I will come and sup with you. But if you don't receive me, I can't force you to receive me. How many of you know it's our own choice? We come to know Jesus as our Lord and Savior. We say, Lord, I come to you, Lord God, and I, I praise your mighty name, and I know, Lord God, that I, I want to reverence you. The Holy Spirit will never force himself on anyone. The Holy Spirit of God is a gentleman. Amen? And, and we, you know, that's why the Bible says in Le Leviticus chapter 10 and verse 3, And Moses said to Aaron, This is what the Lord spoke, saying, By those who come near me, I must be regarded as holy, and before all the people I must be glorified. So Aaron held his peace. Amen? God will only go where he is reverenced. For example, if, if we just came in church with a casual attitude, and, you know, kicked our feet up on the back of the pews. If we were, you know, just running, you know, just, just, you know, you know just, just didn't really care about the things of God. The Holy Spirit really wouldn't move. Amen? But if we come and we're serious in the house of God, and we say, Lord, I take all things seriously, Lord God. I just praise and worship you. I magnify your name. I take the men of God and the woman of God seriously, Lord God. That's when you're going to receive from God. Amen? Whoever you respect, it's a principle in life anyway. Whomever you respect in life, you're going to receive from. Whoever you don't respect, you're not going to receive from. Take it back to high school. If there were some teachers that you knew of and all of a sudden you heard some gospel rumor about them and you accepted that rumor, gossip, whatever it might be, you're not going to receive from that teacher. But if you respect them, you're going to receive from them. Amen? Praise God. So we've got to really reverence the Lord and receive his word. Amen? Praise God. We must reverence God in church. Psalm 5 and 7 says, But as for me, I will come into your presence, or into your house rather, in the multitude of your mercy. In fear of you, I will worship you toward your holy temple. Praise the Lord. Amen? How many you know, church, whatever we do for the Lord, we've got to do our very best. He deserves our best. You know what I mean? It, it, it takes time. You know, I mean, I, I, you know, I've been, pre I've been a pastor for a long time now, 24 years now. It's been, you know, since I was, um, you know, 30 years old. Just kidding. But since I was 20 years, well, just give my age out. Amen. Praise God. But I've been a pastor for a long time. And so, but every time I get behind this pulpit, I look at it, I tremble. I'm like, God, I'm, I'm just a vessel here. I'm delivering your word to your people and to myself as well. And Lord, I don't want to mess it up. 
I don't want to give Craig's opinion on something. I don't want to get behind this pulpit and say a beautiful little story by and by and never use any Bible scripture. That's why if you notice, whenever I preach or teach, I use a lot of Bible scriptures. Because I'm not preaching my, uh, my, my opinion, I'm preaching God's word. And if his word backs it up, then his word is to be obeyed. Praise God. When I go up to Dunkin' Donuts, or actually Heavenly Donuts, amen? Or maybe going to Mark's for a really good cup of coffee like I did yesterday. God bless you, Mark. Amen. And uh, I don't go up to Heavenly Donuts up to the window and say, could you please give me a medium styrofoam cup? They look at me and say, is something wrong? Or what do you mean a cup? I say, give me a medium cup of coffee. I don't say, give, you know, they don't just take the coffee and throw it in my face and say, here you go. The vessel is the styrofoam cup. And that's what I am and that's what you are. The treasure within earthen vessels is within us, and that is God. He's the main event. Just like when you go for coffee, you're going for the coffee, you're not going for the styrofoam cup. After you drink the, after you drink the coffee, the styrofoam cup just goes in the garbage somewhere, right? So we have to always remember that we're the vessels being used of the Lord. We're his hands and we're his feet. We can't dismiss that and our responsibilities in the body of Christ and say, okay, Lord, well, I'll let somebody else do it. Mr. Somebody Else is very busy. We got to say, Lord, then I'll do it. Amen. Praise God. Well, I know that person needs to be witnessed to, Pastor, but, you know, let somebody else do it. Well, how about you share the word with them? Amen. Well, I just don't know what to say. The Holy Spirit, believe me, he'll let you know what to say. Praise God. We're just ve open vessels to the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Leviticus 19 and verse 30. You shall keep my Sabbaths and reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord. God will provide for you if you fear him. The Bible teaches in Psalms 34, verse 9, Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. There is no want to those who fear him. How many of you know God is our provider? He's our Jehovah Jireh. If you lost your job recently, take heart. God is your source. The company is your resource. Don't focus on the resource and make it your source. Because you focus on your, your Lord, the Jeho your Jehovah Jireh, the Lord God who provides for you, and he's going to get another resource because he's the source of you being blessed in your job. Amen. Praise God. If you don't have money right now and you're doing what God wants you to do, praise God. Amen. He's going to come through for you in the name of Jesus. I think all pastors get a little bit concerned about this coronavirus. You know, Lord, what are we going to do? How will anybody come to church now? And we, we got a live stream. What's going on? What's the situation? Boy, I'll tell you what. You know what? The, you, know what the, you know what? The devil sets out to do something to destroy, like COVID-19, but God turns it around and just smacks the devil in the head. Do you know since we've been live streaming, I had to learn all that several weeks ago, how to get our cameras live streaming to the world outside these four walls. Now, literally, there is people that have contacted me from Uganda. There is people from India. Uh, there is people from the UK. There is people from France. They're all over the world. And it's, I'm, not, I'm nothing. I'm saying, Lord, this Jabez prayer we prayed about months ago is coming true. Lord, enlarge my territory. Enlarge our influence for ministry. And it's amazing what he's doing person contacted me from Uganda and they said could you do our, a radio program in Uganda I said well sure but how are we going to do that they said well through WhatsApp uh, we'll, uh, we'll call you on WhatsApp for one hour on Thursdays from 11 o'clock to 12 o'clock you can go ahead and do a teaching and I'll interpret your teaching and it's going to be on the radio I said absolutely I never want to turn down an invitation to preach the gospel never I want to see people saved I said by the way how many people does this radio station uh, um, you know how many how many people does it reach they said oh about tens of thousands I said what that many people are on that station? Praise God for that. Then at the last half hour of the program, they have people calling on prayer requests. Now they're telling me, wow, Jesus healed me when you prayed for me. Jesus did this, Jesus did that. Praise God for that. Somebody recently from India just said, could you go on our Zoom program? We want you to do a teaching. Now I'm going to be on in India. Myself and Sister Agnes, by the way, I pulled her and said, you're coming with me on this one. <laughs> so we'll be sitting up in my office, amen, on the 22nd of August on that, on that day, and Saturday, and we're going to be going ahead and praying and doing a teaching and blessing the people in India. How many know God is such an awesome God? You know, I mean, I'll tell you, He is so awesome. He's just, He's opened up more doors since this has started than before. God is so good, Amen. He is so good. Oh, praise God. I just can't, I just can't praise him enough. Amen? Amen. Praise him. And I want, to, I want to encourage you too. If you have a ministry, count on the anointing of the Holy Spirit. 
And do it the very best that you can possibly do it. And don't say, well, I, I know God's leading me to do this particular ministry, but I can't do it, uh, you know, because I just might not say the right thing. No, you will say the right thing because you're doing it in the name of Jesus. Amen? Remember, remember you're the vessel and he's the main event. Amen. Praise God. And you can move forward in the name of Jesus and move mountains in Christ's name. Amen? Praise God. Now, we've got to know, church, that, you know, some people, too, they come to, they come to the Lord. And, and they have, you know, basically they, they go through lip service. And I want to read a scripture found in Isaiah chapter 29, verse 11. I don't want to mess you up, Hannah. That's the scripture after that one, the next one. Isaiah 29, 13. Therefore, the Lord said, Inasmuch as these people draw near with their mouths and honor me with their lips, but have removed their hearts far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the commandment of men. You know, how many know we don't want to give God lip service? We want to say, Lord, I, 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 I fear you, God. I'm walking in the fear of the Lord. I want to obey you when I worship you. It's got to be real from my heart. I'm not going to go, go through motions, amen? We don't want to be professional Christians. Putting on the tr Christian face on Sunday morning and on Monday morning, we, we, we act like we're not Christians, amen? How many know we've got to be the real deal? And I'm not, I'm not talking about perfectionism. We all have to continue to grow in the Lord from glory to gro glory, from grace to grace, the Bible says. But how many you know we've got to be real in our worship? Praise God. You know, when these guys were up here uh, leading worship, I was so excited playing my tambourine, praising my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, amen, because they were leading us to the throne room of praise and worship. Guys, think about that for a minute. That is huge. You guys have an awesome responsibility. Whatever churches or wherever you minister in, you are literally leading people, God's creation, into a, a, a place of worshiping our Heavenly Father. What an awesome thing. That's, that's really awesome. I mean, praise God. We sing the song, he's an awesome God, isn't he? Amen. He really is. He's, I mean, I can't even, I was praising the Lord the other night, and I couldn't even, I said, Lord, you're so awesome. You're so good. I praise you. I worship you. And I couldn't even, I said, Lord, I don't even have words to explain how I feel about you. Because it's above awesome. It's above alleluia, which is the highest form of praise. It's, it's above hallelujah. It's above that. Isn't that awesome? My God is such an awesome God. Amen. The people at one point had reduced the glory of the Lord to the glory of corruptible man. They served God in the image they had created, not by his true image, but by their own standards. How many, now, this is so important too. So many people, well, you know, I don't think that that's fair, Pastor Craig. How come that happened? I don't think that's fair. And I don't understand why God did this in my life, and he hasn't told me why. This loss happened, this bad thing happened to me. I don't understand how a loving God could possibly do that to his children. We have to understand a few things about that statement. Number one, there is a real adversary and a real person enemy who hates our guts, and his name is Satan. Satan comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Our God has come to give us life in more abundantly. We have to understand, secondly, we live in a broken world. We live in a world where people do a lot of evil things to even good people. Amen? And thirdly, there's been things even in my life I could not understand, and I asked God why. He never answered me. But I still have to trust in his sovereignty. And I still have to worship and praise him and magnify his name. Even if I thought in my own human reasoning and thinking it wasn't fair, God, why? I still have to trust him. And his sovereignty is what counts. Amen? So our human reasoning cannot say, Lord, you're not fair because of this, this, and this in my ruling world. You have your reasons for whatever happened, Lord, and I'm going to just continue to praise you and trust in you. Amen? Somebody say praise God. His ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts, the Bible says. Think about all the stars. How many stars are there? Billions. And what does the Bible say about the stars in Psalm 147? God created every single star, and not only that, he named every one of them. Billions of names, he has named each one a different name. Think about how, how huge our God is. He's awesome. Sometimes we put him in a little box. Oh, I'm not sure the Lord can handle it. It's a little headache. It's an excedrin headache. I don't know. How, our God is a huge God. Amen. We've got to just trust in him and know that his, his, you know, his majesty. Amen. Praise God. Glory to God. 
Proverbs chapter 8, verse 13. The Bible says, All who fear the Lord will hate evil. Therefore, I hate pride and arrogance, corruption in perverse speech. How many times we say something, we say, Oh, Lord, sorry for saying that. Amen? How many know we got to watch what we say? Our tongue has the power of life and death, the Bible says. We can release good words or release bad words. Amen? Proverbs 14, 27, you know, as I conclude in this, fear of the Lord is a life-giving fountain. It offers escape from the snares of death. Psalm 19, 9, reverence for the Lord is pure, lasting forever. The laws of the Lord are true. Each one is fair. Proverbs 1 and 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Some people even go to God, don't tell me what to do. How arrogant is that? We got to say, Lord, tell me what to do. I want to know, and I want to do it. Amen. Praise God. Hebrews 2 and 1. So we must listen very carefully to the truth we have heard, or we may drift away from it. How, how many of us are really, li li you know, really listening to the truth that we hear according to the Word of God? We don't want to drift away from it. Amen. Maybe a class, you know, in, in, in uh, elementary school, you know, the, the teacher would always say, Give me your undivided attention. Undivided attention. Johnny, stop doing those spitballs. Put that down right now. Ron, put the cell phone away. <laughs> Give me your undivided attention. Teachers did say that, didn't they? But how many of God is saying the same thing to you and I? Christians, Give me, daughters and sons, give me your undivided attention. Because I'm going to say something really important. And that's why the Lord is, the Bible says everything that's really important. Amen? So we got to say, yes, Lord, I receive that. Praise God. Jesus says, how can you call me Lord, Lord, and don't even do what I say? The word Lord means master. It means owner. It means that, that we, we obey him. We've given our hearts to him. We're going to do what he says. But we have to obey him. Amen? Praise God. Philippians chapter 2, verses 12 and 13. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and to do for his good pleasure. We must never work for our salvation. That's not what it's saying. It says work out your salvation. How? In fear and trembling. In the fear of the Lord, amen? In walking with God and growing in our relationship with Him. How many know what faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God, amen? Praise God. So let me ask a question to every one of us from pulpit to pew and those watching all over the world. The question is this in this message. Have we lost the fear of the Lord in our lives? And let us live our lives in the fear of the Lord if we have. Come back to that place again. You know, I remember when I, was, I first accepted Jesus, I was 18 years old. I was so excited. Somebody gave me a little pocket Bible. It was this big, New Testament. And every single night, I'll never forget, every single night before I went to sleep, I read that for two hours. When I read that Jesus did miracles, I said, that still happens today. I didn't want to step on an ant. I didn't want to swat a mosquito because it was God's creation. And I wanted to tell everybody about Jesus. But I also walked in the fear of the Lord. I'm not patting myself on the back and saying this, but when I first accepted him, I was so excited and just absorbing his word from that little Bible like a sponge at night. But sometimes as you move forward, year after year, decade after decade, you may get a little bit away from that fear of the Lord in which you first initially had. The church at Ephesus did just that. They were on fire for the Lord. And this is the church that Paul writes, Ephesians chapter 6. He's talking about spiritual warfare. He says your, your battle is not against flesh and blood, but, but it's principalities, powers, rules of darkness, and so forth. And he gives a big list. The church at the time Paul was speaking to them was on fire for the Lord. But then 20 years in advance, you go to the book of, of Revelation. One of those seven churches of Asia that, that Jesus told the pastor to deal with is you have lost your first love. You were doing so good at, at the beginning, but you got to come back again. Amen? How many of you know we want to be at that place where we're on fire for Jesus? When we wake up in the morning, he's on our mind. We're talking to him when we're driving our car. Praise God. When we go to bed, he's on our mind. Praise God. We want to dream about Jesus when we're sleeping. He is our very sustenance. I am the bread of life, he said. That means he's our very sustenance is how we even breathe. Amen? For me, to live is Christ and to die is gain, is what the Apostle Paul said. 
Praise God. Amen. So I just want to encourage you, church. Amen. Get back to the place where God wants you at. You're going to have such victory in your life. Amen. You can have this loving, close relationship with the Lord. God is such an awesome God. Amen. And He is, he is just, He loves us. Amen. He loves us unconditionally. And, and He wants us to that place where we walk in the fear of the Lord and the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Let us stand to our feet and close in prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord, and we praise your mighty name. I thank you, Lord God, for your message today. I pray that we'd walk in the fear of the Lord, Lord God, like never before. I pray, Holy Spirit, you would speak to us like never before. Whenever we are tempted to sin, I pray that we'd say no to that sin, Lord God, and we shun that evil. I pray in Jesus' name that, Lord, we would not be pleasing the world, but we'd be pleasing our Heavenly Father. And, Lord, we thank you as believers, Lord. We want to grow in you like never before. We praise your mighty name, Lord God, and we ask all these things in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen, amen and amen. God bless you. Give the Lord a hand. Amen. Hello. Good morning. morning. Oh, I hope everybody sings along. These are these are not unfamiliar tunes. Great praise songs. Amen. We'll kind of explain them if we have to. Yep. Here we go. I am weak, but thou art strong. Jesus, keep me from all wrong. I'll be satisfied as long as I walk. Let me walk close to thee. Just a closer walk with thee. Just a closer walk. Let it be, dear Lord, let it be. Through this world of toil and snare, if I falter, Lord, who cares? Just a closer walk, just a closer walk. Round to Jesus is my plea. Just a closer walk, just a closer walk. Daily walking close to thee. Oh, let it be, dear Lord, let it be. When my feet life is old time for me will be no more guide me gently safely on to thy kingdom show to thy show just a closer walk with thee. The closer walk, just a closer walk. Grant that Jesus is my plea. Just a closer walk, just a closer walk. Oh, daily walking close to thee. Just a closer walk, just a closer walk. Let it be, dear Lord, let it be. Oh, let it be, dear Lord, let it be. Amen. You know, they don't have to be old, old songs to praise God. Because our Heavenly Father, He's so awesome. 
And sometimes, sometimes we forget, we forget that, that in our daily lives. This is kind of a standard. Yeah. Go, Dave. Rolls up his sleeves, he ain't just putting on the Ritz. Our God is an awesome God. There's thunder in his footsteps and lightning in his fists. Our God is an awesome God. And the Lord wasn't joking when he kicked him out of Eden. It wasn't for no reason that he shed his blood. His return is very close. You better be believing. Our God is an awesome God. And when the sky was starless in the void of the night, our God is an awesome God. He spoke into the darkness, created the light. Our God is an awesome God. And the judgment and the wrath he poured out on Sodom, his mercy and his grace he gave us at the cross. I hope that we have not too quickly forgotten that our God is an awesome God. Awesome if you're from Maine. You know, <laughs> along with being an awesome God, we have the assurance, we have the blessed assurance. And we have the promise of the word that Jesus is always with us. And we've taken this song, and you're going to know the tune. It's an old traditional hymn, but we've taken it and we've added to the tune of Under the Boardwalk. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of love. Born of the Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my song, praising my Savior, all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior, all the day long. Praising my Savior, Savior. Oh, 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 perfect submission, oh, perfect delight. 
visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending, bring from above echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Praising my Savior, Savior. Oh, 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 perfect submission. Now all is at rest. I am my Savior. This is my song, praising my Savior, all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior, all the day long. Praising my Savior, Savior. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of I gotta tell you something, Ron. Ready? For my part in this I see Nothing but the blood of Jesus For my cleansing this I plead Nothing but the blood of Jesus All oh, precious is the flow That makes me white as snow Nothing but 
the blood.